Welcome back to the Caregiver Minute, where every weekday, family and professional caregivers gather to refine their skills, gain inspiration, and prepare to serve. I recently taught a class of CNAs at the College of Western Idaho, and as we were having a discussion and kind of talking about different questions that people had and troubleshooting, one of the students talked about a resident in a long-term care facility where he works who asks for food over and over and over. He said it's a little bit frustrating because she will have just eaten and she'll come to him and say, I need food. You got to feed me. Now, as we were talking through a variety of reasons why that can happen, one of the things that I shared with him I think could be valuable for everyone. Often we approach a situation like that by focusing on ways to keep people engaged so they're not thinking about food. Or we might look at the environment and recognize that if we're always in the dining area, it's a trigger. It's a reminder that, oh, this is where we eat and maybe I'm hungry. We've also talked before on episodes of the Caregiver Minute about the fact that people with cognitive decline sometimes have a hard time feeling full. They don't recognize satiety signals in the same way that they would if they didn't have such cognitive problems. That's all valuable. But one of the things that I shared with this young man is the fact that he might just be giving her the wrong food. It might be that she has diabetes of the brain, which is the nickname for Alzheimer's disease. And in about 80% of those cases, people have a serious problem with insulin resistance in the brain. Now, insulin is the hormone that allows us to deliver glucose or sugar into the cell so that the little energy factory there, the mitochondria, can produce energy. Many people with Alzheimer's and other types of cognitive decline are struggling with insulin resistance, and they're in a case of being overfed and undernourished. They might have plenty of sugar floating around in the bloodstream, but if their insulin signaling mechanism is kind of broken and they can't deliver that sugar to the cell, it just doesn't get there and you still have an empty gas tank. This woman very possibly could be in a state where even though she's eaten, cognitively she recognizes she's still sagging, she needs fuel, and she's craving that fuel. Now in most cases what people are craving is sugar. But if they can't use sugar, we need to give them the alternate fuel that they can use. It's more likely that they'll be able to burn fat for fuel than sugar for fuel. And so I suggested to this young man, he might get a little bit further if he offered a snack with some healthy fat. Eating olives or some cheese might get him further than giving her a sandwich or a piece of toast or a bagel or a cookie, or anything else with carbohydrate in it. Now that takes a little bit more forethought. It's trickier to come up with something that might work for a person that gives them some healthy fats as opposed to the myriad of options there are when it comes to carbohydrates. But it's something to try in a situation when a person is just asking for food over and over and over. I hope that gives you some interesting food for thought. And I look forward to seeing you again soon for another episode of the Caregiver Minute.